Oh my god, dude, what the hell did I just watch? Episode 5 just ended, and for real, Hayden Christensen is a gem for Star Wars and forever will be. What we saw from Anakin in this episode is something that we must get more. I mean, come on. Let's just start with the episode, because I'm going to talk more about Hayden as the episode goes on. So we open up on Cetos, and naturally Hera, Jason, and everybody else is confused as to where Sabine and Ahsoka are. For Sabine, we know that she is gone. Weirdly enough, they needed deeper scans in order to detect Ahsoka later on. Behind the rocks, Hera sees Hu Yang sad, and it's great that they have unnecessarily made Hu Yang's eyes squint, because of course droids don't need that much squinting, but it adds to the humanity of Hu Yang, who is now sad that Sabine is gone and they didn't stick together with Ahsoka. This is where the title card appears and we the name of the episode, Par 5, Shadow Warrior, appears. As expected, we we immediately go back to the world between worlds, quote unquote, because spoilers, we later learn that this all might be a figment of Ahsoka's imagination. She is in a quasi coma, per se, because she is currently drowning. One of the most funny quotes comes in in this episode. Ahsoka tells Anakin that he looks the same. This is kind of a great joke coming from the protege of George Lucas. You see, George Lucas decided in the Return of the Jedi Blu-ray version to insert Hayden Christensen as a force ghost at the end instead of Sebastian Shaw, who was originally the force ghost of Anakin. Ahsoka hinting that Anakin doesn't look older but looks the same as his younger self without any explanation is a great hint and a great nod to the fans. Anakin tells her that you look old. As we get a chuckle from Ahsoka, this is actually a direct reference to another Filoni project in Star Wars Rebels. The first time we see Ahsoka in that series, Rex meets up with Ahsoka after a long time. This is what Rex tells her. You got old. However, immediately after that, we see that Ahsoka is still not completely there. It seems that the aftershock is much more tougher than we realize. And again, this is why I say that she is kind of an, in a quasi coma because she doesn't remember what happened and how she got here. Then, after Anakin helps her, she remembers that she lost a fight to Balin Skull. These sounds, as Anakin is walking, these thumping sounds, are, of course, foreshadowing for what's to come. Anakin tells her that she still has a chance to live, meaning that throughout the entire episode, it seems that Ahsoka wants to let go, to die. However, Anakin won't allow that. That's why he constantly is inspiring Ahsoka to fight, to not give up. This is what the subsequent scenes with him signify. One is never too old to learn, says Anakin, of course, referencing his own, where he redeemed himself in the end with the help of his son. This is an important lesson to learn later on again, foreshadowing for what's to come in this episode. After much speculation, we of course now see that it is in fact Anakin's lightsaber for some reason the reflections the lighting wasn't correct in episode 4 that's why fans were really weirded out now once Anakin prepares for attack live or die again signifying that she is in the middle if she doesn't fight she will die but Ahsoka tells Anakin she won't fight him and Anakin says I've heard that before this is the moment Anakin is referencing I will not fight you father what proceeds, of course, is beautiful, beautiful lightsaber fights, and Hayden Christensen hasn't lost a single step. As I said in the beginning, he is the greatest gem Star Wars has. Back on Cetos, we affirm the Jason suspicions that he is Force-sensitive. Not only that, it seems that his abilities in the Force are quite substantiated because he can actually hear Ahsoka and Anakin fight. This is how he senses Ahsoka's presence somewhere out there, and this is what ultimately leads to her being saved because by the instructions of Jason and also Chopper, Hera and the others, by scanning the sea, finally find Ahsoka and save her. After a momentary lapse on Anakin's part, Ahsoka seems to have the upper hand. Anakin, though, hasn't taught her everything he knows, with him destroying the platform and sending her in the abyss. This is why, again, I don't think Ahsoka is in the real world between worlds, because this place being shattered like this is not a good sign if it is real. What follows after this are great Clone Wars scenes we see. I immediately noticed that Ahsoka wasn't played by Rosario Dawson anymore because she was shorter, slimmer, and she was the kid version of Ahsoka, the one we saw when we were first introduced to her in the Clone Wars, played by Ariana Greenblatt. In this first scene, we noticed Phase 1 clone troopers, that is their armor, and we finally got it, folks. Anakin in his Clone Wars armor 
in live action. We've never actually seen this in Star Wars, only in animated form. Now we see that Ahsoka is not reliving this moment fully because she is aware th strange things are happening around her. She mentions to Anakin this was one of their first missions. Now after Christophsis, the animated movie that we were introduced to Ahsoka, this other mission seems to take place on Ryloth because later on we actually see Twi'leks talking to clones. Overall the theme is pretty clear. Clear. Ahsoka is a child soldier, and nowhere is it made apparent than here in live action. While Anakin is trying to tell her that this is how she will be taught, this is how she will become a Jedi, and ultimately this is how she will survive this ordeal, meaning she will wake up, her trauma is pretty apparent. The Jedi approved child soldiers back in the day during the Clone Wars out of necessity. You clearly see this in a feeble Ahsoka that is still trying trying to figure out what actually happened to her life. Before the Siege of Mandalore, this is the first time we see Captain Rex in live action, he, but he is far away. Then we get to the most fantastic part, and this is the Siege of Mandalore, where Ahsoka now is super fast, super powerful. She has a pep in her step, similar to the animated version. This was awesome to see. This is where we get Captain Rex talking to Ahsoka also, and this is the first time Captain Rex was voiced by somebody other than Dee Bradley Baker. It sounded like the voice of Tamora Morrison, and Anakin wasn't here in the Siege of Mandalore. Of course, this is at the end of Clone Wars Season 7, where Soka faces off Darth Maul, and in fact, they fight for Anakin, ironically, trying to convince Ahsoka that she is part of his legacy, a lineage of Jedi teaching one another. It was pretty fair that Ahsoka doubted the teachings of Anakin, considering what he became later, wondering if she has that Darth Vader in her as well, since it was passed on to her by Anakin. This is of course foreshadowing for later when we see Ahsoka have a hint of yellow Sith eyes. This is where things shift. Anakin now has his Sith eyes, ignites his red blade. From this moment on, Anakin speaks like Darth Vader. His lines are incorrect and later you lack conviction in a deeper different voice signaling the middle of Anakin and Vader's voice. You hear Darth Vader's breathing and as dark Anakin approaches Ahsoka, Ahsoka, he shifts between Darth Vader and Anakin. The music becomes intense. This reminded me of when Palpatine shifted between Sidious and Palpatine in Star Wars Rebels while he's trying to trick Ezra. In the end though, Ahsoka defeats Anakin similar to how Obi-Wan defeated him in the flashback scene in, in the Obi-Wan series. As Anakin is going full throttle, he forgets how to defend himself. He gives in to his anger and Ahsoka ultimately disarms him. Anakin bows his head with his Sith eyes and once he opens them again, now he has his blue eyes back, signifying again his redemption. Ahsoka chooses to live in the end and Anakin's work is done. Now the world between worlds becomes all water and we realize that Ahsoka is actually drowning. Hera in the end saves her. As Ahsoka wakes up, we see her without her head garb. This is the first time we see we have seen this in live action. She learns that the star map has been broken. She actually uses Force Echo to re realize that Sabine has gone with Balon and the others. There's a great moment between Jason also where it tells Ahsoka that he had heard her fighting somebody with a lightsaber and we see Ahsoka hesitate to tell him that. Carson tells Hera and Ahsoka that the New Republic fleet are on their way to stop them from completing this mission because why? They have disobeyed orders only to show that the New Republic is completely discombobulated but we already knew that. Even Mon Mothma seems to be completely ineffective at this this point. What's most interesting, however, is that from the moment Ahsoka wakes up until the end, we finally have confirmation of Ahsoka the White. Although unofficially, she is now wearing white garb and a white armor underneath. So things are going according to plans for Dave Filoni. She even has a new symbol and a new head garb. So from this moment on, she is Ahsoka the White, as many fans predicted. She talks to the Purgle. She realizes that the Purgle will make their migration to Peridia, to this new galaxy, talks to the Purgle through the Force, so she has animal connection, and they go 
inside the beast, inside the whale. Many are familiar, of course, going inside the belly of the beast, the belly of the whale. There are biblical references. There is also a Pinocchio reference to this. There are many allegories to this, but for our purposes, it serves for their jump into hyperspace and Ahsoka is going to this new galaxy to meet up not only with Sabine, but with Ezra as well. So I'm also high for episode six now. This is going to be fascinating. Only three episodes remaining, so they better make most of it because there are not many episodes remaining for Ezra and Thrawn to make that much of an impression. Hopefully, we will get that. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know what did you think of this episode.